second, it's PLB with MLB News back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to do the most valuable player for every MLB team this season. So if you like this kind of content, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll get notified whenever I upload a video. Link to my other channels in the description below. And if you are new, the schedule here is new videos every Monday and Friday, two videos per week. But if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, you won't have to remember that because you'll just get notified whenever I upload and it'll hit your subscription box. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this video. Start off with the Tampa Bay Rays. Now the Rays have been a real good team this season. They have a lot of different MVPs. Brandon Lowe could be one, but I went with Nick Anderson out of the bullpen. He was lights out out of the bullpen this year. He had a 0.55 ERA. He had a 2-1 record. He was lights out in that bullpen. They needed him a lot um, to close games for them. And he was a big piece in their season this season. Next for the New York Yankees is going to be DJ LeMahieu. Now the reason I'm going with DJ LeMahieu is because of his high batting average for one. And he's got a 364 batting average, 10 home runs, 27 RBIs. So he had a really good season. Um, the reason I didn't pick Judge or Stanton was because they both were injured. And I don't think that you can give a most valuable player um, for that team to a player that's been injured. So, all the season. Oh, let's go ahead and move on to the Red Sox. Xander Bogarts, 11 home runs, 28 RBIs, and, three, and a 300 average this season. About the only decent player for the Red Sox this year. Everybody was pretty terrible. I think Red Sox fans would even agree with that. Such a disappointing season. And, I mean, just so disappointing for the Red Sox. They'll be back next year, though. They're kind of like the Warriors, I guess you could say, because they had Cell and Rodriguez out. So, they're kind of like the Warriors, I guess you could say. They didn't have their main players. Next is the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, you could go with Kevin Biggio. Bichette and Guerrero were both injured for bits of time this year. And the one I'm going to go with, though, is Lordy Scoriel. Um, it was either him or Ryu for me. And I went with Lordy Scoriel, 11 home runs, 33 RBIs, and a 308 batting average this season. And, yeah, I think he was their MVP, in my opinion. Next is the Baltimore Orioles, and I think they have one obvious one, and that has to be, for me, Anthony Santana. Now, they did have some surprising performances out of players like Ryu Uriz, Jose Iglesias. Um, Chris Davis was still bad, though. On the season, Anthony Santana had 11 home runs, 32 RBIs, and a 261 batting average. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the AL Central. For Cleveland, this one is between Ramirez and Bieber for me, but I ended up going with Bieber just because he was really good in the regular season. Obviously, he kind of choked. Um, he pulled a Clayton Kershaw in the... Um, Clayton Kershaw in the postseason, um, but he was 8-1 this year with a 1.63 ERA. I think he's definitely the AL Cy Young, and I don't even think it's much question, honestly, because he was just so good for Cleveland. And even though they've traded players like Bauer, Clevenger, they still have a good pitching staff, which not many teams could do. That's how good Cleveland's pitching is. Next, Chicago White Sox, Jose Abreu, 19 home runs, 60 RBIs, and a 317 batting average this year. He was really good this season. Has to be their MVP, I would say. For the Tigers, a player that kind of, I guess, broke out later in the season, that's going to be Jamer Candelario. None of their players were great on their team. He has seven home runs, 29 RBIs, and a 297 batting average. No player was great on this Tigers team, and nobody expected anybody on this Tigers team would be great. Um, you could go with Jacoby Jones based on the st season start that he had, but I went with Jamar Candelario. Whit Merrifield for the Kansas City Royals. I think he should be requesting a trade soon. Um, this offseason, I would predict he gets traded, and I think I'm going to do a whole video being like predicting the MLB trades this offseason. And I'm obviously going to do a free agent video, too. Those will be two separate videos, though. Um, those are videos that will be coming probably when the World Series is over. Maybe before, though. I don't know. 
Um, but on the season, nine home runs, 30 RBIs, and a 282 batting average. Um, best player on the Royals, I would say. And for the Minnesota Twins, it is Byron Buxton. Now, Buxton finally showed that power this season. Uh, he obviously had a great glove, but just did not have the hitting. And he did better with that this year with 13 home runs, 27 RBIs, and a 254 batting average. Um, nothing to complain about there. I think he was their MVP. Angels, this is short and sweet Mike Trout. 17 home runs, 46 RBIs, and a 281 batting average. Now, will he get AL MVP? That's up for question. His team was terrible. But that's what it's been for his whole career. They haven't done anything good for him his whole career. I mean, that's a rant for next time. Houston Trash Can Beggars, I'm going to go with George Springer. 14 home runs, 32 RBIs, and a 265 batting average this season. He was pretty good, about one of the few players that could actually hit without the trash cans. Matt Olsen for the Oakland A's is their MVP. 14 home runs, 42 RBIs, and a 195 batting average. The batting average was low, but he was their probably best hitter. Matt Chapman probably would have been if he was the, if he was not injured, but he was injured. Mariners, that's going to be Kyle Lewis. He definitely was one of the biggest surprises of 2020. We knew he was going to be good, but not this good this quit. 11 home runs, 28 RBIs, and a 262 batting average. For the Rangers, player that they should have traded at the deadline, but they didn't. Is going to be Lance Lynn. He was six and three this year with the 3.32 ERA. It's hard to give an MVP to the pitch to pitchers on honestly, but I, I'm going to go with the pitcher there just because disappointing. So for the Braves, their MVP is probably the NL MVP, Freddie Freeman. Freeman this year was great. Um, he's been great his whole career. 13 home runs, 53 RBIs, and a 341 batting average. He's my pick for NL MVP. Marlins, once again, a pitcher. I'm going to give it to Sandy Alcantara. Sandy Alcantara is really good. 3 ERA this year and a 3-2 and two record. Um, his 3-2 and two record obviously would have had a little better stats if it wasn't for their outbreak. Next for the Nationals, they didn't have a lot of bright spots this year, but it's Juan Soto, 13 home runs, 37 RBIs, and a 351 batting average this season. Next for the Phillies is going to be JT Real Muto, who who knows if they re-sign this offseason. Um, I think they probably do, which sucks as a Braves fan, but it's probably happening. 11 home runs, 32 RBIs, and a 266 batting average this season for him. And for the New York Mets, I'm going to give it to Jacob DeGrom, another pitcher I know, but I'm, I'm going to give it to Jacob DeGrom. 238 ERA, 4-2 record. He's probably their MVP every year just because they are put in first place by a lot of articles, and they don't live up to the hype. Cardinals is going to be Paul Goldschmidt now. The Cardinals are another team that didn't get to play as many games um, because of COVID, but six home runs, 21 RBIs, and a 304 batting average for him this season. He had a pretty good season. Next for the Reds, their MVP is going to be another pitcher, Trevor Bauer. Um, he's the NL Cy Young, in my opinion, five and four record with a 1.73 ERA. Um, was the best pitcher in the NL. And the, and Cleveland traded him for not much. Pirates is going to be Colin Moran with all the Pirates players that had hope this season being just terrible. Colin Moran's their MVP. 10 home runs, 23 RBI, RBIs, and a 247 batting average. Next for the Cubs is going to be another pitcher, and that's going to be you, Darvish. Um, definitely their biggest surprise this year with a 2.01 ERA, 8 and 3. Obviously, they're out of the playoffs because they choked versus the Marlins. It's simple. And next is Brewers, another pitcher, Josh Hader. Yellich obviously would be the MVP if he was, if he had played like he had in the last couple seasons. One and two with a 3.779 ERA. He's the best reliever in the game, I would say. Next for the Dodgers is going to be Mookie Betts. 
16 home runs, 39 RBIs, and a 292 um, batting average. I think he'll finish second in MVP. Next for the Diamondbacks is going to be a pitcher, and that's going to be Morel Kelly. 2.59 ERA and at 3-2. and two. Their whole team was disappointing, so it was very hard to find an MVP. Giants, they barely missed the playoffs this year. They had a lot of surprises, but their MVP is going to be Mike Jastrzemski. 10 home runs, 35 RBIs, and a 297 batting average. Next for the Padres is Fernando Tatis. Um, obviously, Machado is a good argument, too, but I would go with Tatis personally. 17 home runs, 45 RBIs, and a 277 batting average. And the final team on this list is the Rockies' Nolan Arenado. And Nolan Arenado on the season has 8 home runs, 26 RBIs, and a 253 batting average. The Rockies' pitching started off good. They just started off good as a team, and then... They did terrible from there. Yes, yeah, so those are the most valuable player from every MLB team this season, in my opinion. If you enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. You'll get notified whenever I upload a video. Thank you for watching, and I will be back with more videos soon.